Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving Find All Possible Recipes from Given Supplies, which is lead code problem 2115. Before we get into the question, you guys keep requesting these Google questions, but you're not subscribing and you're not liking the video. So do that right now, or the videos will stop. All right. Intimidation aside, let's now read the question prompt. You have information about n different recipes. You are given a string array recipes and a 2D string array ingredients. The ith recipe has the name recipes of i, and you can create it if you have all the needed ingredients from ingredients of i. Ingredients to a recipe may need to be created from other recipes, i.e. ingredients of i may contain a string that is in recipes. You are also given a string array supplies containing all of the ingredients that you initially have, and you have an infinite supply of all of them. Return a list of all the recipes that you can create, and you may return the answer in any order. Note that two recipes may contain each other in their ingredients. Okay, so we read the question prompt. Now let's look at a quick example and figure out how we want to solve this problem. Okay, let's think about this example here. So we're given the recipes and we have bread, sandwich, and burger. And to make bread, we need yeast and flour. To make a sandwich, we need bread and meat. And to make a burger, we need a sandwich, meat, and bread. And we know that our original supplies are yeast, flour, and meat. So let's look at this, right? Can we make a sandwich? Well, we have meat, but we don't have bread in our supplies. Same thing happens with, um, you know, a burger. We don't have a sandwich and we don't have bread and we don't, but we do have meat. But can we make bread? Hmm, let's see. So to make bread, we need yeast and flour, which we have. So we know that we can make bread. And to make a sandwich, we need to make bread and meat. And we know that we can make bread because we have yeast and flour. Therefore, um, you know, we can kind of think of this as like a sandwich requires meat, which we have. And then we need bread, uh, which requires, you know, flour and yeast, right? Which we also have. So we can actually build this and we're good to go. And also for the burger, we can think about its dependency chain. So to make a burger, we need what? We need a sandwich. So sandwich, uh, we're gonna need meat, which we have, so we're good to go there, and bread, right? So we can kinda like build this dependency tree again. So to make a sandwich, what do we need? We need yeast and flour. And All right, and to make bread, we also um, need yeast and, oh, and then we need meat, sorry. Uh, sandwich is bread. Sorry, it's it's not yeast and flour. It's bread and meat. So this should be bread and meat. And then to make bread, we need what? We need uh, yeast and flour, right? So yeast and flour, which we have. So we can make the bread, which can make the you know the sandwich. And since we ha can make all three ingredients, we can make the burger. So. If this is starting to look like some sort of graph to you that we need to traverse, well then you're very clever, collect your uh, points at the door because that's essentially what it is, right? We're starting from some higher level uh, recipe and we're basically trying to break it down to see, one, uh, is the ingredient simple enough that we have it in our supplies or if it's a complex uh, ingredient that's you know actually a recipe, can we make it given the ingredients that we have? So for example, with the sandwich and the bread, right? These are actually recipes, but we can make them because we have the bread and the meat and we have the yeast and the flour. So that's the general gist of what we wanna do. We kinda have an idea here that um, you know we're gonna have to build a graph here, right? You build a graph and somehow traverse it. So let me try to erase this stuff here. So what we wanna do is we wanna build um, some graphs here and we're gonna traverse them to find our answer. So the first graph that we wanna do is to actually map ingredients. So we'll just, well, I guess they call them supplies here. So for each supply, we're gonna map it to all of the recipes um, that require this, um, this supply, right? So that's gonna be our first graph. Our second graph is simply going to be counting uh, you know, the in degrees of a current uh, recipe. So basically, how many ingredients does a recipe need, right? So we will map uh, recipe, recipe 
uh, maps to the number of ingredients. Ingredients, right? So we can essentially think of uh, being able to make a recipe if we have all of the ingredients, right? So this is what the problem is really going to boil down to is whether or not we can actually build um, our recipe given it's either going to be you know, using a simple supply here or a more complex recipe that we can actually build. And we're going to have to traverse our graph somehow to actually figure out, um, you know, for each recipe, can we actually traverse and find out whether or not we have all of the required ingredients and then traverse down that kind of dependency tree to figure out whether or not um, we can do it simply, right? So what we want to do here, if you remember, the, the graph was quite uh, hierarchical, right? There was, you know, parents with children. And obviously, we needed to build some of these lower level ones because they were dependencies of a higher level. And for this, um, we're actually going to use topological sort because you always visit the children before you visit the actual parent. Uh, therefore, we would find out whether or not we can actually build these, uh, you know, lower level things before we get to the higher level point. So. If that's uh, at all confusing, don't worry. You don't really even have to know what topological sort is. It's not really that necessary. I'll just show you the code, walk you through it line by line, and hopefully it should make a lot more sense. I think this is a little bit trickier of a topological sort problem. I think course schedule and alien dictionary are a little bit more straightforward. This one, it's a bit harder to see how it works, but it doesn't matter. Enough talking. Let's go to the code editor and actually type this up because looking at the code is always simpler. Test, test. Okay, we're back in the code editor. Let's type this up. So I told you that we want to define two graphs here. And the first one is going to be mapping uh, each supply to the possible recipes that they're used in. So let's define that graph. So we're going to say graph um, is just going to be default dict. And obviously, we're mapping uh, a supply to a list of things we can make. So it should be a default dict where the default key is a list. Now we also need to track the number of um, you know ingredients for a given recipe. So we're gonna need a little dictionary for that. So let's just call this in degree. Uh, and basically, this is the amount of you know edges going into um, a given um, recipe uh, in terms of the ingredients we need. So we're just going to have a simple default dictionary here. Uh, and since we're just counting how many uh, ingredients there are, it's just gonna be an integer here. So now what we want to do is actually build out our graph here. So we're going to say for recipe um, ingredient. Actually, they call them supplies uh, supply. Oh, no, they're ingredients. Sorry, ingredient ingredient in. So we're going to zip these two together because we know that the zeroth index is the, the you know, one recipe and then the zeroth index in, in ingredients represents the ingredients for that recipe. So we're going to zip these two together. Uh, if you don't have zip, obviously, this is a Python function, you can just use it with a simple um, for loop and then just use the index extraction. But this just makes it easier for me since we're using Python here. So we're going to zip together the recipes and the ingredients. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say in degree for the given recipe, uh, we're going to set that equal to the length of the ingredients. So basically, we're just counting um, how many ingredients we have here for that given recipe. And now what we need to do is we basically just need to for each ingredient, remember, we're mapping all of the recipes that it can possibly be used in. So we're going to say for, um, I guess we'll call it ing in ingredient. Uh, I guess these namings aren't the best because this is plural, but technically this is also plural. Uh, so that no, I don't know, this problem is weird. Anyway, uh, so for ingredient uh, in ingredient, <laughs> Yeah, that sounds horrible. Uh, we basically just want to say graph uh, for that ingredient. We're going to append to it the recipe that we can actually make here. So that's going to build out our uh, graph here and our in degree kind of mapping here. Now what we need to do is actually just process, um, you know, our graph here and actually do the traversal to figure out which recipes we can make. Obviously, we need to return a list here. So let's define that data structure for the answer. So we'll say ands is just going to be an empty list. And we're going to create a queue. We're just going to traverse uh, using breadth first search. Uh, so we're going to make a queue here. And we're going to pass in a deck. And we're just going to pass in the supplies. 
because uh, we want to basically iterate over all the supplies and see whether or not we can make the recipes. And remember, we can make a recipe if basically we have all of the ingredients. So uh, we also want to basically have a uh, recipe set. And the reason that we want to have a recipe set here uh, is because we're going to be doing lookups inside of it. And obviously looking up inside of a list is going to be big O of n time. And we want to use a set here to actually get it faster. So we're going to say recipes uh, equals to set uh, recipes. So pretty simple there. Now we need to actually do the uh, traversal. So we're going to say while Q, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically get our supply. So supply equals to Q dot pop left. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say if this supply is actually a recipe. So for example, you know, we could have a supply like bread, but bread is a recipe to make a burger. Uh, we or you know, that we could actually make it right. So if if a given supply is all we need to actually make a recipe, um, then we're okay. And remember supply, um, doesn't just have to be our original supplies we will actually be appending to this as we build recipes so we have access to them uh, later on so if a given supply is actually a recipe so if we've somehow made bread and bread is one of the things that we need to make then we can actually add that to our solution because we can make bread right we could you know through our traversal uh, figure out that we have yeast and flour, therefore we can make bread. And if bread is one of the recipes that we want to make, then we want to add that we can make bread to our solution. So, uh, sorry, this shouldn't be a for loop. We want to say if the current supply is actually in recipes, and now you can see why we use the set, so we can do that quick lookup, uh, then obviously that is an answer. So we're going to say answer dot append that given supply. Uh, okay, so. Now what we want to do is we want to go through all of the possible recipes that we can make with this given supply. So we're going to say for recipe in graph of supply, because remember, we're mapping supply to all of the recipes that you can make with that supply. So we're going to say, OK, for that, uh, you know, recipe, remember that the in degree uh, basically tracks how many ingredients are needed. So now that we see that um, we have the supply here, what we can do is we can say in degree for that given recipe, we can actually decrement it by one because we know that we now have one of the supplies necessary. So we can essentially um, just, you know, get rid of, uh, you know, one of the in degrees because we have that supply. So what we want to do now is we essentially want to say if the in degree of our given recipe actually equals zero. That means that we have all of the recipes available to us because every time we hit one of the supplies that we could use for that recipe, then we essentially decremented the count. And remember, the count can never be zero because the um, you know we obviously set all of the uh, counts here to be the length of our ingredients, and obviously the length of the ingredients is never going to be empty. So it must be at least one. Therefore, if we get back to zero, that means that we have encountered all of the supplies we need. So we can actually treat that as an answer. Um, oh, sorry, not as an answer. Uh, apologies. We wanna, we've, we've now built uh, some new thing, right? So if we have a recipe for bread and it says, OK, we need flour and yeast. Um, if, you know, in degree for that recipe is zero, that means that we have both flour and yeast. Therefore, we can now add bread back to our queue and use it later on, right? Because bread, like we know, is actually a recipe to make a sandwich, right? You need bread and then meat. Um, so we want to add that back into our queue because, you know, other recipes may actually need, um, you know, that given uh, su supply, right? So a recipe can be uh, a supply for another, or sorry, an ingredient for another um, a recipe. So. That's what we want to do. Basically, the while loop will run. Uh, so every time we actually, uh, you know, find a supply that's in recipes, then we'll just add that to our answer. And then once this while loop breaks, because there's nothing left to process, all we need to do here is just return our answer. So let's run this. If I can just find where the button is, uh, submit. Okay, let's see. Rest. Oh, great. Did I? Apparently, I cannot spell. It's not good because English is my first language. Okay, <laughs> maybe I should run this. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So my bad, guys. Um, can I spell today? Let's see. Okay. Looks fine. Yeah. I, I hate spelling recipes. It always trips me up. Uh, okay. Let's see. A few seconds ago. Okay. So accepted. All right. Cool. So we know that that works. Um, so what is our time and space complexity? So if you don't already know, all um, topological sorts, which is what we essentially did here, are going to have a time complexity of big O of V plus E, where V is the number of vertexes in our graph, so basically distinct nodes, and then E is basically the number of uh, connections between them. So that is the, to uh, the total time complexity. and for the space complexity, it's actually the exact same thing where we have big O of V plus E because we have to store um, the graph and all that information inside of the graph, right? So it's going to depend on, you know, essentially, uh, let's see how many ingredients we have and how many recipes. So like in this case, you know, you can think about that um, as kind of the, the V and E here. So that's going to be your time and space complexity. This is a bit of a weird question. Uh, it definitely took me a little bit to kind of understand how it works, but conceptually, I don't think it's that complicated. I think that even if you don't understand what topological sort is, you can kind of get how you can use smaller recipes, um, which then you know are a part of a bigger one. As long as you have the underlying supplies for a recipe, you can kind of keep chaining them up and perhaps build that parent recipe that requires uh, multiple things. So that is how you find, uh, solve find all possible recipes from the given supplies. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know these Google ones are highly requested. They are very annoying to make because they love to pick quite difficult questions and they're uh, just annoying to figure out and code up and explain well. But we managed to get through this one, I think, without too much pain. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like and a comment as I told you to do in the beginning because you guys always want these Google questions but you don't subscribe to the channel. Uh, so stop freeloading, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm and helps the channel grow. Otherwise, I will stop lecturing you guys and have a great rest of your day. Bye.